the Department of Human Genetics in the Leiden University Medical Center studies the genetic contribution to human disease and it really ranges from monogenic diseases to multifactorial and acquired diseases. It has a really translational focus. We strive to translate our findings to the benefit of patients. The department has a broad focus. It has many different disciplines and it studies many different diseases. And that's all supported by a strong genomic score with bioinformatics and biosemantic support. But it also has, for example, a forensic laboratory that is used to work with very small amounts of genetic material. Traditionally, a narrow focus has been seen as a key to success. I think the broadness is really an asset in our department. Having so many disciplines together allows you to make unusual combinations and help each other further in your studies. Well, my research focuses on resolving the dark matter of RNA and DNA molecules. So taking full advantage of innovative technologies to explore how they are structured and what they do. While well, most uh, researchers focus on the mappable uh, parts of the genome, which actually constitutes a very small proportion of the genome, uh, we are interested in complex repetitive uh, regions of our genome. We would like to understand how they are structured, how they are regulated, and how they are associated with human diseases. The Genomic Center uh, actually allows us to take advantage of new innovative uh, technologies, uh, for example, single molecule sequencing technologies that uh, gives us the opportunity to explore the complex regions of the genome and further understand uh, their structure and their role in biology. The uh, Leiden Genome Technology Center was established uh, in 1992 and we were initially set up to uh, provide second sequences and uh, as for clone distribution. We uh, have expertise and we have equipment that other people within the LUMC and outside of the LUMC can uh, use so that also they can uh, benefit from the cutting edge research that we have. We focus on next generation sequencing and uh, because of this we have uh, access to uh, the Illumina HiSeq sequencers, uh, the ion torrent, the ion proton sequencers as well. We have recently acquired the PEG bio sequences and the Chromium X10 uh, platforms for single cell analysis and single molecule sequencing. And with these new applications, we are ready to uh, further investigate the DNA and RNA uh, world. Here in LUMC, we have a lot of new instruments that produce very particular types of data that we have never seen before. And since we are front runners in this technology, we have to develop our own methods and cannot simply take methods from the shelf. In the department, we are employing more and more bioinformaticians and computer scientists to be able to analyze all these new types of data. In Leiden, we came up with the FAIR principles for findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable data. In the era of open science, these become more and more important and they are now widely adopted. They are part of our way of professionalization of data management and software development. Genome instability is actually a hallmark of cancer. So the, the failure to repair DNA damage is a contributing factor of cancer. Genetic instability uh, can be caused by defects in DNA repair mechanisms. And our research focuses on understanding the fundamental principles of DNA repair mechanisms. We try to understand the basic biology, but we also would like to understand what this means for the patients that come into the clinic. And on top of that, there are many technology platforms. So we use state-of-the-art technologies such as CRISPR-Cas and next-generation sequencing uh, as, as a tool in our research. Well, the ultimate goal of our research is to build a knowledge base that will allow for the identification of um, individuals that are at high cancer risk. The Department of Human Genetics has been involved in the identification of the genetic cause of Duchenne muscular dystrophy and this turned out to be caused by mutations in the dystrophin gene that disrupt the reading frame and therefore these patients cannot produce a functional dystrophin. 
was then also found that patients that have a mutation that maintains the reading frame can produce partially functional dystrophins and these patients have a less severe muscular dystrophy called Becker. This opened the road for therapeutic options and the department has been involved in pioneering a, a therapy called axon skipping where we try to intervene with splicing so that Duchenne patients can produce Becker-like partially functional dystrophin instead of their non-functional dystrophin. We're working on uh, elucidating the splicing of the dystrophin gene with next generation sequencing techniques in order to optimize this uh, approach further. And we're also looking to see whether this approach can be uh, applicable to other genetic diseases such as Cadacil, an early onset dementia syndrome and Huntington disease. The future for the Department of Human Genetics in part is in precision medicine or personalized medicine. But that requires a much deeper understanding of our genome and the regulation of our genome. And by that I not only mean the part of the genome that we are already quite familiar with, but also the great majority of the genome that we often ignore in our genomics analysis. And I believe that our expertise in single molecule sequencing really helps us to better understand this part of our genome. So our reductionist approach combined with the holistic genomics approach really will help us to better understand our genome, the regulation of our genome and again the development of therapies for patients with genetic disorders.